Hello everyone and welcome to Designing Characters, where I explain turning characters from my mind and other media into characters for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Here, we focus on builds and personality traits, utilizing standard array or point by with D&D Beyond's layout. Today, we're making Saber, or as some know her, Artoria Pendragon, the refined young noble lady constantly forced to lose ideological battles and yet shows an incredibly idealistic side that attracts all kinds of wannabe heroes to her. But above all else, she can smite the ever-loving shit. So, what do we need for our golden girl? First, we need to make your sword play legendary and deal devastating damage. Also, it needs to be a cannon of light on occasion. We'll try to do the invisible sword thing, but that's more of a you're gonna have to ask your DM for an invisible sword. Next, we need to be strong enough for our sword swings to have a knockback effect and fast enough to blur across the battlefield in a moment. Finally, separate from your magic supernatural sword, you also need to have your own set of skills that are able to properly represent your status as Saber, making your skill with the blade unmatched. For abilities, we're going with the standard array. Put your 15 in strength and 14 in constitution, representing the raw power of your combat style alongside your incredible toughness. Next, your 13 in wisdom and 12 in charisma. You're perceptive and have a strong will while being a natural leader. Finally, put your 10 in dexterity and 8 in intelligence. The medieval education system wasn't amazing even for royalty, and with your combat style, you're not exactly what most would call dexterous. Your attacks are actually pretty telegraphed if you look at them. They're just so strong and fast that it really doesn't matter. Now, next up is race. You're human, but you came from an ancient era of humanity that granted tremendous magical power and inhuman physical traits that puts you above and beyond the norm. So, we're going with half-elf. This increases your charisma by 2 for a total of 14, as well as increases two other ability scores by 1. Take strength for a 16 total and wisdom for a 14 total to help balance out those uneven numbers a bit. Next, you're granted 60 feet of dark vision and fey ancestry, thus granting you advantage on saving throws made against being charmed and rendering you immune to sleep effects. You also gain proficiency in two extra skills and a language. Take acrobatics and athletics to help balance out that dexterity score and represent your absolute mastery of your body. For your language, take Sylvan, representing your ability to hear the spirits of dead warriors. Moving on to background, you are a young noble lady born to a high noble family. However, you were born in a dark age, as it began to crumble due to war and barbarian attacks. Due to you being born a female, your father disowned you, placing you within a family of knights to be trained as one of their own, as he had been promised a son in his mind, and you were a disappointment. Placing you within a family of knights to be trained as one of their own, unaware of the prophecy connected to your birth, Thus given to your father by a grand divination wizard, you were raised as a mere knight. Despite this, you were trained in the history of your country, politics, and more than anything else, the blade. With natural talent beyond anything your peers were capable of, you were innately gifted, seemingly guided constantly by the whispers of kind words in your ears. Valiant, strong-willed, and with a desire to bring about the golden age of your country once more, you push beyond even what your talent could offer you. With a desire to save your land, you left your family with the goal to crush the barbarian tribes that are slowly bringing your home to ruin, unaware of the noble blood running through your veins. As such, we're taking the knight background. This grants proficiency in history and persuasion, showing that charisma and diplomatic ability. You also gain a tool proficiency in a game. Take Dragon Chess, fitting that noble background. You also gain a language. Take Celestial to hear the whispers of the guardians that reside within your blade, guiding you. Finally, you get the Retainer's Background feature, giving you a lot of non-combat, common or NPC that can assist you in various ways based on your DM. Now, finally, for class, we're going with Paladin. The child of prophecy bound to the Holy Sword from the beginning, you are a chosen champion of your deity. Paladins have a D10 hit die, proficiency in every armor, weapon, and shield, religion, intimidation, as well as wisdom and charisma saving throws. You also gain the class feature Divine Sense, allowing you to detect celestial fiend or undead nearby. 
You specialize in supernatural creatures, after all. Finally, you gain Lay on Hands, allowing you to use your action to heal yourself or another creature through your touch. Transfer some of your mana into another, or use it to reinforce yourself. Level 2 Paladins gain a Fighting Style. Take Great Weapon Fighting, making your Great Sword that much more dangerous. You also gain Spellcasting and Divine Smite. Divine Smite allows you to expend your spell slots to hit far harder releasing the energy in an explosion and a divine light when you land a hit on a target. For your actual spells, take Bless to make yourself and your allies just a bit better at everything. Cure Wounds to represent your ability to shrug off damage and use your power to recover. And finally, take Compel Duel and unleash your attacks against a target attacking your ally to force them to focus on you instead. Level 3 Paladins gain Divine Health, rendering you immune to disease. You also gain a Sacred Oath. Take the Oath of Glory from Magic of the Gathering. This grants a variety of unique oath spells that perfectly fits a rapidly moving ball of blue and gold concussive force. You gain the Channel Divinity benefit as well, allowing you to become a peerless athlete for advantage to strength and dexterity checks and letting you jump like Mario. Or you can cause your already devastating smite to inspire all those around you as the wrath of fallen heroes strike into the target, thus granting a decent chunk of temporary hit points to yourself or an ally afterward. This automatically prepares Guiding Bolt and Heroism for you, granting you that fearless bravery and a bolt of condensed energy from your blade as a ranged attack when needed. Fourth level paladins gain a feat. Take Sentinel allowing you to play on that front-line defender of your party, basically allowing you to shut down enemies that try to move past you, while also getting yet another chance to smite them at the same time. You also gain an additional spell. Take Wrathful Smite to invoke the fear of Britannia into your enemies, as well as devastating them with raw power. Level 5 Paladins gain a second attack and access to second level spells. From your oath, you automatically get Magic Weapon, an enhanced ability to maximize your own physical abilities, magic, and specifically granting you the first stage of your magic sword. Sixth level paladins gain auras of protection, giving them and all allies within 10 feet a bonus to their saving throws equal to your charisma modifier, making that will and superior body that much more evident. For your spell, take Lesser Restoration to shrug off the various minor debilitating conditions many try to debuff you with. 7th level Paladins of Glory gain an Aura of Alacrity, increasing your own movement speed by 10 and increasing the speed of your allies that start within 5 feet of you by the same. You're starting to reach that ridiculous blurring speed that you're known for. 8th level Paladins gain an Ability Score Improvement. Give yourself a plus 2 Strength for a new total of 18. You also gain an additional spell. Take Branding Smite to nullify the advantages that the Assassin classes keep trying to use against you. Ninth level Paladins gain access to their third level Oath spells. This grants you Haste and Protection from Energy. Expanding on your ridiculous physical movement speed, you can move in a burst as well as with your ability to simply shrug off incoming damage, even from magic. Tenth level paladins gain an aura of courage, rendering themselves and any allies within ten feet of them immune to the frightened condition. You also gain an additional third level spell, taking blinding smite to combine with your normal spites and deal a devastating explosion of blinding radiant light. Speaking of smite combinations, 11th level paladins gain an improved smite. This causes all weapon attacks to gain an additional 1d8 radiant damage. A common misunderstanding, this does not require you to smite to gain this 1d8, it's just a passive benefit to your weapon attacks. 12th level paladins gain an ability score improvement. Take a final plus 2 strength for a capped level of 20. This also grants you another spell. Take Aura of Vitality and use it to represent your ability to continue recovering stamina even in the midst of battle. 11th level Paladins gain access to their Oath spells, granting you Compulsion and Freedom of Movement naturally. This will emphasize your raw physical ability and a supplementary utility spell for controlling a hostile situation. Remove your preparation of Compelled Duel at this point and instead take Death Ward, allowing you to have those anime moments to just get back up when you should be dead. Though I guess technically you already are. 14th level paladins gain Cleansing Touch, allowing you to end one spell effect on yourself or someone you touch by releasing your mana in a cleansing flash of energy. 15th level glory paladins gain Glorious Defense, allowing you to add your charisma modifier to your own or an ally's AC, and if it works, you're able to even counterattack. 
and then smite them again. 16th level paladins gain a feat. Take resilient for dexterity in order to amplify your survivability significantly with how common a save it is. You also gain an additional spell. Take Aura of Purity to ensure you and your allies are far less likely to suffer debilitating effects from nasty creatures and spellcasters. 17th level paladins gain their oath spells. Thus, you gain Commune and Flame Strike, giving you the power to communicate with the spirits found within the sword you wield, as well as unleash an explosion of raw divine energy from the blade, probably by yelling its name. 18th level paladins, before all else, have the ranges of various auras increase. This makes your ability to augment your party far greater. You also gain an additional 5th level spell. Take Holy Weapon, and you officially have a proper Excalibur. 19th level Paladins gain a feat. You have a few solid options here. I recommend taking Tough, but an alternative could be Skill Expert or perhaps Athlete, maybe even Mobile to push that physical superiority, and in some of those cases, even out that uneven dexterity score that you now have. That said, with tough, your hit points will increase significantly, and the extra point in dexterity and the other minor benefits don't quite matter enough to me. That said, mobile's additional movement feat would put you at 50 movement speed passively, and that's pretty impressive, but only if your DM is going to be giving you some big maps. Finally, at our 20th level capstone, Glory Paladins gain the Living Legend feature. Use your bonus action to essentially just become a hero for a minute. This allows you to gain advantage on charisma checks, which is nice, but the primary benefit is that you can guarantee once a turn, you will always hit someone once as long as you're in range. Furthermore, for a reaction, you are able to reroll a failed saving throw. You also gain a final spell. Take Destructive Wave for a final explosion from your blade using a less common damage type than Flame Strike when needed. Now for strengths. First, you hit like a truck, jacked up on enough steroids to put Lance Armstrong to shame with the amount of righteous D8s you're going to be dropping on some of these poor monsters. For instant, casually dealing 8D6 plus 12D8 plus 10 damage in one turn as long as you hit with two smites and use a smite spell as a bonus action. So basically barely draining any of your resources to deal 82 damage on average in one turn. Keep in mind a good chunk of that is radiant, but another good chunk of it is magical slashing, and another decent chunk of it is psychic damage in that instance. So you actually have some decent damage variety as well. Next, you're hardy, with excellent saving throws for the three most common saving throws in the game. You also have over 200 fixed hit points, and a decent AC at high level, fantastic AC at low and mid levels. Finally, you aren't an absolute master of words, but you have some decent social skills and excellent physical skills. You're going to be able to be of use in roleplay situations and actually help for a variety of out of combat situations with your athletics and acrobatics. Now, for your weaknesses. You may have some half decent skills, but you're not amazing at the non-physical skills in reality. You aren't really a proper main face. Even if you're okay at it, your other utility skills are also highly lacking, and the social skills you do have would be more of a secondary face if the main one is currently unable to participate. With your lack of perception and insight and a couple of the other important checks, you're, uh, you're not looking too good on the skill front. And even the skills that you have proficiency in for knowledge are pretty subpar due to your aid intelligence. Paladins lack any real way to compensate for that with utility magic, which makes this a lot worse. Now, speaking of that aid intelligence, if you fight anything that uses illusions, psychic damage, feeble mind, or any of the other rare but incredibly powerful intelligence saves, you're in deep trouble with your piddly plus one int save. Even with your reroll abilities, that doesn't mean much when you have such a terrible modifier at high level. Finally, a core part of being a paladin is the reliance on charisma modifiers to really play up the various benefits, features, and abilities. With only a 14, you're missing a lot of the full benefits that you could get from it. But your focus isn't on things like utility, tracking, or worrying about illusions. You're one of the most powerful warriors in existence. You're good at taking damage and incredibly good at dishing it back out to protect your allies. Control the battlefield, catch people off guard with how mobile a tank can be, and use your spells to buff yourself. Dish out consistent high damage. Make your enemies fear every swing of your sword. But maybe don't let yourself become so bogged down by your power that you stop relying on others around you. That could end badly. As always, thanks for watching.
If you enjoyed the video, please drop it a like, subscribe for more, hit the little bell, all that stuff that YouTubers ask you to do every single video. Yeah. I do videos on Dungeons & Dragons as well as my own world once to twice a week. I'd like to thank my Platinum Patrons, Krom and SPS. Your donations mean the world to me. If you'd like to join them, there's a link in the description to my Patreon. The $3 tier will automatically unlock the ability to vote on these builds that I make, as well as other videos and a couple of other minor benefits. With higher rewards, granting access to a lot of my custom homebrew, a lot of the D&D content I make, sneak peeks into the adventure module that I'm building from scratch, all kinds of stuff. You can find a couple of free samples of that over on my World Anvil, though... Most of that is for my personal community, which you can find on Discord, as well as for the literate roleplay board I run, which is also public. Let me know what character build or video you'd like to see next in the comments below. I read them all and reply to as many as I can. As always, I love your input on the things I make. Have an amazing day, everyone. Be safe. Love each other. Goodbye.